Hi, this is Jane Lewandowski again, uh, Information and Education Services Librarian at SE4. In the last video, I showed you how to get to the Political Science 230 Library Research Guide, which will help you find information for your assignment. Another fast way to get there, it has a user-friendly URL, so it's the library homepage slash PS230, or I'm going to go to Google. It's indexed in Google, so you could put SC4 library and then PS230. And it usually will be the first item that comes up. So there we are. And you will want to use the tabs in the left hand column to access various sources. And right now I'm going to go over search strategies when you're finding information on your topic. And sometimes it's easy, you can just put in, you know, the name of your country like Germany. But if you want to narrow it down in any way, these search strategies may help. Um, the first is phrase searching. So if your term is a phrase, like the examples I have here, um, it's best to put it in quotation marks because that forces the database to search it as a phrase. This works even like with Port Huron when you're searching for information on Port Huron. Otherwise, it can the database or even Google can separate the terms and you'll get too much information that's not on your topic. And you can use Boolean operators to refine your search. The three most popular are and, or, and not. Um, and I'm going to just show you the and and or today and how you can combine the terms. So if you're looking for articles or websites that have two keywords in it, like if you're looking for France and foreign policy or foreign policy information in France, you could put in the term foreign policy and the Boolean operator and France, and then all of the articles or eBooks or websites that you pull up should have both keywords in them. And put your Boolean operators in capital letters because that forces the database or Google to search it as a word, otherwise it, it ignores the word. So you can see I have other topics here that might be helpful. And in Google, Everywhere you have a space, it automatically puts an and, so you don't necessarily have to use the and operator in Google. You or together similar terms. So in this case, if you're looking for demographics or population, they don't mean exactly the same thing, but let's say you're looking for either term, you can or those items together. And usually you find more items when you or things together. And you can combine terms to refine your search. If you have ORs, it's best to put them in parentheses. So here I have North Korea and Russia and foreign relations or international relations. Putting the ORs in parentheses forces the database or Google to do that part of the search first and then the rest of the search. Otherwise it reads it left to right. So we'd have North Korea and Russia in foreign relations, which would be okay, or international relations. So we'd have a lot of material on international relations that had nothing to do with um, North Korea and Russia. And then I just give you some suggested keywords that you might wanna use. I'm going to go back up to my library guide and move to evaluating sources. Just briefly, I'm going to say um, MLA has this very short list of things you might wanna look at when you're evaluating sources. And it works whether you're using MLA citation style or, or APA. They also have a two page checklist, which if you click there, you can have a downloadable PDF of um, a checklist that you might wanna use. We also want you to try what is called lateral reading. And that is investigating the author or the organization responsible for posting the information. Um, because 
in the past you may have someone may have told you and this we've done it also that dot uh, org websites are not good sources of information and that can be true but sometimes they are reliable sources of information so it's best to google the author or organization responsible for posting the information or search the author or organization in the library's one search box and there's a video if you'd like to read it on lateral reading and it's just a three minute video that explains um, searching for information about the person or organization responsible and they also have a great handout here that's downloadable that explains um, why you want to look at more than just whether it's a dot com or a dot org or does the site have ads well, there's some reliable sites like New York Times and Wall Street Journal that have ads in them. And that does not mean they are not useful and good sources to use for your paper. Are there citations? Sometimes non-reliable sources of information do have citations. And often the most current information may not be the most uh, reliable source or credible. Okay, and so you may want to move on to the next video, which will talk about websites that are, are good sources of information for your paper.